All right, hello. In this video, we're going to learn how to graph tangent and cotangent. Now, uh, before viewing this video, uh, I will share with you a video from Khan Academy where he, the person in the video, describes how to graph just y equals the tangent of x, which is graphed here on your screen in green, and then the increment is done in purple. So by the time you're watching this video, I'm going to talk more about graphing tangent with the transformations. So if we look over here, what I mean by that is, what do we do when, when A is, isn't one, when B isn't one, when C and D aren't zero? And pretty much is gonna be very similar to um, when we graph sine and cosine, but also different. Now, the steps for graphing tangent are here below. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is graph the sinusoidal axis. So if we were graphing Y equals the tangent of X, uh, there's no vertical shift, so that point would go right there. And then mark A from the sinusoidal axis. So in this, if it's Y equals a tangent of X, the amplitude is 1. Now, it's not called the amplitude, but it's still going to be referred to as A, that value in front of tangent or cotangent. All right, so now we have where three points are going to go vertically when we graph tangent. And there's going to be three points that we're going to keep graphing on repeat. But along with those points, we're also going to graph an asymptote. So an asymptote is a graph, is a, is a line, not on your graph, that the graph gets really close to but never actually touches. It usually shows, and in this case it does show, where the value for the tangent of x is undefined. And we know that tangent is sine over cosine. So when cosine is zero, then tangent's gonna be undefined because you can't divide by zero. Now to find the asymptotes, we're gonna start with the first asymptote, so step three, count by the increment, so there are three points, and the last count will be the second asymptote. So we start with the asymptote, and then there's three points, which I'll highlight in a different color, orange. So we go one, two, three, and then another asymptote. All right, so plot the pattern. It's an increasing function, so it goes low, middle, high. Now, if you start with the starting point, meaning, uh, you know, in this case, we start on the origin, all right, it's gonna start off with a middle and then a high point and then an asymptote. And then the next period would start with a low point here with the same increment each time. So low, middle, high, asymptote. So I think of M H A L as a way to remember how I, what order I plot the tangent points in. But if you just always start on the sinusoidal axis, so vertically where the shift is, uh, then you also can't be wrong with that. So let's put that all together and graph something that's not the tangent of x. So here we have four times the tangent of x. So we're gonna start off by identifying these terms on the left. So a would be four, okay? Four is just a number in front of your function. B is gonna be one because B is a number in front of X. Now, with cosine and sine, we do two pi over B to find the period. With tangent, we just do pi over B. So in this case, since B is one, the period is just gonna be pi. Now, like sine and cosine, we always just divide the period by four to get the increment. All right, a sinusoidal axis, although it's not really part of our graph, we can still say it's Y equals zero to help us graph. And then the asymptotes, we'll come back to that. So now let's mark off our y-axis. So we have no vertical shift, so we'll plot a point there. And actually shouldn't plot a point, maybe we'll just put a tick mark there because we're not 100% sure it's a point yet, although it will be a point. And we're gonna go up four, and we're gonna go down four because that's our vertical uh, dilation. All right, then we're gonna start in the middle. So our first point, our starting point, is gonna occur at whatever makes the expression inside the tangent of in this case, it's just x equal to zero. So whatever's in the parentheses of tangent, like what you plug into tangent, whatever makes that equal zero is gonna be your starting point. So we're gonna start right here. All right, then we're gonna move across our increment. So our increment was pi over four. So this tick mark will be pi over four. The next one will be two pi over four, which simplifies to pi over two. Then three pi over four. Oops. Then four pi over four, which simplifies to pi. All right, and you can do the same thing the other way. But as long as you do a couple, I'll assume that they're consistent markings. So now we got our first point. 
and then we're going to go to our high point, which is going to occur one increment over, and then up A. And then the next increment is going to be our asymptote. So after the high point, it's going to uh, be an asymptote. Now, if you think back to that Khan Academy video, the reason why is because tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So as the slope sine over cosine, as sine over cosine, that value increases, right? It's going to approach infinity until finally the denominator is equal to zero and then it's undefined. Let me go back to a low point. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And then middle. And then this is kind of like two half periods. So let's graph the other way to graph a full period. So we go to the left and we go down one or left one, down one, then to the left again, and we got an asymptote. And now we got a full period here. So then we go to the left one and then it's up, and then middle, and then bang. So that would be the graph of y equals four times the tangent of x. And our asymptotes, we have two of them. One's gonna be right here at pi over two, x equals pi over two. So again, it's a vertical line. So hoi, vux, vertical lines are x equals equations, right? And our other one will occur at x equals negative pi over two, right? That's because it's two increments away from the origin. So that is the graph of y equals four times the tangent of x. So now I'd like you to try the next one on your own, um, and then I will demonstrate it, and then um, start the video and see how you did. All right, so pause the video right now and try this one on your own. Okay, so now let's do it together. Now, if you just want to see the answer, you can fast forward. But if you want to hear me talk through it, then, uh, then sit back and listen. So A, we're going to say is 2. Now, it is important that it's negative. But I, used to, I think of A as like a value that the max or min is from the starting point, from the middle point. So it's a distance, so I like to keep it positive. But if you wrote it negative, it's, it's really fine. But when we're talking about sine and cosine, amplitudes are distance, so they should be positive. All right, for B, that's going to be 1 half. So that means period is pi over B. So pi divided by 1 half. That's the same thing as pi times the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. So the period is 2 pi. Then if you divide that by 4, 2 pi over 4 reduces to pi over 2. And then our sinusoidal axis will be at y equals negative 1. So I'm still going to graph that here. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I take it back. We're just going to mark it on our y-axis. All right. Then um, we're going to go up and down two units. So we got one right here. And then down two from negative 1 would be at negative 3. Okay. Now, those are the three places where my points are going to go vertically. Now, to figure out where they go horizontally, we need to plot the increment. So every box will make pi over two. Okay, so that'd be pi over two, and then this would be pi, and then this would be, well, two pi over two, this would be three pi over two, this would be four pi over two. So four pi over two is two pi. So I'm just, instead of writing every increment, I'm just gonna do a couple of them because I don't really have room. So if we go to the left pi over two, this would be negative pi over two, this would be negative two pi over two, which reduces to negative pi, and then negative three pi over two, negative four pi over two. Okay, now we do have a reflection here. So first, um, in red, I'm gonna graph y equals two times the tangent of one half x minus one, all right? And then I'll show you how it relates to the negative version of that. All right, so we already counted for two by looking at this distance here and here, okay? We already counted for one half, that was our period and our increment. And then we already accounted for negative one by shifting all our points down one. So we're gonna start at whatever makes this equal to zero. So one half X equal to zero means X is zero. So that's where we're gonna start at X equals zero. And we know that we start in the middle for tangent. So it starts right there. Then we go over an increment, then we go up over an increment and then asymptote. And if we go from the middle and go back an increment, we'll be at our low point. Then we go back another increment and we're at our asymptote. And this would be one period of tangent. Now, how does this relate to the one we're supposed to graph, well, it's the same thing, except there's a reflection over the x-axis before you shift it down one. So if you reflect it after you shift it down one, then you just reflect it over the sinusoidal axis. So this graph, the one that we should be graphing, y equals negative two times the tan of one half x minus one, is gonna have the same asymptotes 
but the high and the low points are going to flip because it got reflected. And that's it. Everything else is the same when that leading term is negative. All right. So our final answer should be the graph in yellow. All right. So make sure that all you got to do when you reflect um, over the x-axis, the sinusoidal axis, is to switch your high and low points. Because this was positive and it became negative um, because it got reflected and then shifted down one. All right. And this was negative, got reflected over the x-axis, this shifted down one, and it was still positive. All right. So we want to graph this right in yellow, and that's one period.